Uh, okay. So um, in Italian case or in the area where the Italian minority lives, there are four municipalities. I will show you later the map. And there are 24 settlements where the bilingualism is official. So there are, of course, more settlements in these four municipalities, but just in 24 settlements, uh, we have uh, both, both languages are, are official. So in this case, Italian and Slovenian. And there is also one, one hamlet. This hamlet is a special exception, and I will also speak about this hamlet later. You can see also the number of the Italian minority members. So in 1945, there were almost 20,000 Italians in Slovenia. And you can see that in last, let's say, 70 years, the, the number <clears throat> decreased very rapidly, very strong. So we, ha we had a last census when uh, the questions about the language, the religion, the nat nationality was, uh, these uh, um, questions were, were asked. The last census was uh, 2002, and at that time, approximately 3,700 <clears throat> Italians uh, were in, in these four municipalities. Uh, <clears throat> when we were part of the, the Yugoslavia, until the 1991, uh, Italians in Slovenia and Croatia were organized as a, let's say, political group, as a one political group, so together in the association, uh, the name of this association was Unione degli Italiani dell'Istria e di Fiume, Fiume is Rijeka, Croatian city, and after we, our independence in 1991, this um, association is named Unione degli Italiani. A minority has uh, radio and TV, it's part of the, our national um, uh, uh, radio and, and TV company, and they also publish some some newspapers. You can see here, so daily and biweekly and uh, monthly newspapers, and uh, about the school system. Uh, school system in Italian minority cases is so-called bilingual. It means that we have uh, Italian schools and separated we have Slovenian schools. And in Italian schools, they use all the time the Italian language, but they have a, how to say, separated <clears throat> subject on the schedule, uh, Slovene language and literature. And of course, in, in Slovene school, the situation is vice versa. So they use Slovenian language all the time. They have um, Italian language and linguistic subject separated. Uh, in the case of Hungarian minority, you can see that there are five municipalities and 30 settlements. Uh, so why I'm mentioning so municipalities and settlements? I'm mentioning this because we in Slovenia we have three official levels of um, uh, administration, uh, how to say administration level. So the settlement level is official, and we have then municipality level, and then we have the state level. So we don't have any regions not yet like in in other countries. So we have just three three levels of of this. Um, uh, of uh, of uh, these admin administrative levels. Um, in Hungarian case, in the census or the data from the 1920, uh, there were approximately 15,000 uh, members of Hungarian minority in, in Slovenia. And according to the last census from 2002, the number is approximately 6,000. 6, uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, to <laughs> how to say pronounce correctly the uh, name of the organization but you can see it's written here it's on the same level like in 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 the italian case they also it's more it's also political association but as, as, as well also cultural so they also publish some newspapers some books they care for some cultural events and so on and also the hungarian minority has the, the own uh, tv a TV channel at our national uh, TV station. Uh, and they publish the weekly uh, newspaper. But the um, school model in the Hungarian minority case is a little bit different. It's so-called bi-directional. It means that in um, uh, schools in, in on this area, uh, 
they use both languages at the same time. So for example, um, teacher can ask in Hungarian and kids can answer in Slovenian, or maybe 15 minutes teacher explaining, explains in Slovenian language and 15 minutes in Hungarian. So uh, these bilingual schools in this case are a little bit different than this model in, 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 in on the Italian, with the Italian minority. So this is just a brief introduction into um, minorities in, in Slovenia. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can see here the map of Slovenia and the location of the Italian minority. It's on the coastal area. You can see here two pictures of this landscape. So this is the city, uh, the old city center of Koper or Capodistria in Italian. This is the port of Koper, and you can see here some uh, salt pans. On the map, you can see all 24 settlements, officially, officially bilingual settlements, and you can see that most of them, they are close to the, to the sea, uh, to the coastal area. And as I mentioned before, we have here one exception, it's so-called Valmarin. Um, Valmarin is not an independent settlement, um, so it caused some problems in the process of, of the standardization. Why? Because in 1954, when the London of Memorandum was signed, I will show you later the document, Valmarin was an uh, independent settlement, and at that time it was recognized as a bilingual settlement. But later on, Valmarin was joined with Spodneškofie, another bigger settlement, or joined or, or merged, and the question erased, okay, so it's now the whole new settlement bilingual, or Valmarin is not bilingual anymore? So I don't know how familiar are you, some of you are probably with the um, GIS, so with the Geographical Information System. So when our mapping uh, authority or agency prepared uh, these um, shape files on, on, the, on the national uh, or the state level, so they prepared a special shape file just with one polygon with this Valmarin because this is really, this is just one case in Slovenia that part of the official settlement is bilingual, just one case. So nobody accepted, um, expected in 1954 when the Memorandum of uh, Understanding in London was signed that this can, this can happen. And the similar situation <clears throat> is on the Hungarian border. You can see here it's like a belt uh, with um, uh, settlements, bilingual settlements. Here is one gap, so it's not uh, connected. But um, nevertheless, uh, all um, these uh, settlements are officially bilingual and all these names are, are uh, standardized. And you can see also the, the landscape is a little bit different, some, some hills and some uh, vineyards and so on. So this is more or less a situation in Slovenia <clears throat> about, about minorities. Uh, let me speak some uh, words about the standardization. Uh, I think that uh, regulation or legislation, as you can see here, it's a, a core thing in the process of standardization. But from our point of view, of, uh, of from my or our point of view, there are also two quite uh, two additional quite uh, important, let's say, pillars in the process of standardization. And these are, these are first database and also the official body. So the whole process of standardization consists of three main pillars, as you can see here. It's, of course, not on the international level, but it's our case in Slovenia. And I will speak some basic facts about database and also official body, and later on we will <coughs> uh, uh, I will draw your attention about leg legislation or, or um, regulations. Um, First of all, database nowadays is more or less uh, so-called geodatabase. It it means it's it's um, uh, some how to say like a Excel file, but it's put in the coordination system. So in our case, the the name of this database is Rezi. It means the register of uh, geographical names in Slovenia. It's official official database. Uh, it's of course. Um, uh, di digital version of this of this database and but the, of course the question is how all these names and approximately 200,000 names <clears throat> are included in this in this file and how all these names were how to say harvested 
uh, through the history and um, saved in this file. Um, in Slovenia, we have the, the first quite important and very detailed official source is so-called the Franciscan cadaster. It's quite common in all Austro-Hungarian or more or less the majority of Austro-Hungarian areas. So probably our my colleagues from uh, Hungary and Austria are familiar with this with these sources. And the scale of this source is one uh, versus um, 2000 880, so it's quite a de detailed map, and you can see here a Piran or Pirano in Italian, and you can see also here that the name is just in Italian language. And also I put here some other uh, uh, part fr from this uh, cadaster. I don't know if you see or not, but it's written here San Bernardino, it's also the Italian, Italian name. So all, and also Mare Adriatico, it means Adriatic Sea, all these names in this old source, this is 1820, it was published at that time, so it's in Italian language. Then we have a, another source, very important, it's a scale 1 versus 5000. And you can see on this map, this map, <coughs> or these maps were done more or less by, by soldiers, so the our survey and map, map, mapping authority in 50s, 60s, 70s, sent uh, soldiers on field and they collected uh, these names. And you can see here that the majority of names are just in Slovenian language. So th there is not no bilingual uh, names here. Uh, and the, the third picture, the third map is scale one versus 25,000. It's a little bit more modern. And you can see here, and it's more or less the same, the same area, but you can see here that the names of settlements like Piran, Pirano, or Portorosh, Portorose is written bilingual. So this is the first, let's say, evidence of bilingual geographical names in this in these sources. Uh, some facts about commission. So the first commission for standardization of the geographical names were founded uh, even in the period of Yugoslavia in 1986. Uh, but uh, when we um, uh, declared our independence in 1991 and we became member of uh, United Nations organization in 1992. At that time we started slowly prepare and <clears throat> founded some some agencies and, and other boards um, uh, in the frame of United Nations and the Commission for Standardization of Geographical Names was founded uh, in 1995. Nowadays it's consists of 11 members. It, this picture is a little bit old, old, but more or less the members are more or less the same. So uh, we have one member from Ministry for Foreign Affairs, one member from Ministry for Culture. Um, our secretary, Maria Bernot, she's from Mapping and S Surveying Agency. And uh, one member is from uh, Geodetical Institute. And then we have uh, two members from Faculty of, Wa of Arts. One is from Department for uh, Slovene Language. The other one is, uh, is from the Department of Geography. And then we have three members from our institute, so from Geographical Institute, and two members from the Institute for Slovene Language and Linguistics. So, and we, we are, on, let's say, official body on, on this field. And as I mentioned before, so the third and let's say the most important pillar of the process of standardization is legislation or regulation. So when I started to, how to say, exploring this topic, um, I decided to start to check both, <coughs> um, both uh, treaties uh, with these treaties, our um, border with Hungary and also with Italy was both borders was, were established. So uh, the um, border with Hungary was established by Treaty of Trianon in 1920 after the First World War. Um, this um, uh, Trianon is located close to the Versailles in, in, in Paris. And I checked the, the document, but there is nothing about uh, geographical names in this document. Uh, the reason that we have Hungarian minority and in Hungary there is a small Slovenian minority is that the Commission for Border decided to draw the border between countries not according to the um, to the how to say 
the national uh, regulations, but they decided to put the <clears throat> to draw the the border between two watersheds. So the uh, Raba watershed on the uh, eastern part and Mura on the western. And this is the reason that um, Hungarian minorities in Slovenia and Slovenian minorities in Hungary. Um, after the Second World War, the border with Italy was also established by the so-called um, London Memorandum in 1954. And this is the, according to, to um, I would say, all these documents, this is the oldest um, uh, uh, legal or regulation connected with um, geographical names, bilingual geographical names in Slovenia. So I will show you later the, the document. And then I listed here all uh, decrees and uh, acts uh, from 1948 onward, and those of them who are underlined in, in those decrees and acts, um, bilingualism or um, ethnically mixed areas connected with geographical names are mentioned. In others, just geographical names are, are mentioned. So this is the um, the distinction between these two, two types of, of decrees or acts. And uh, now we will go through the most important um, articles and paragraphs because this is the, the main topic of today's speech. And unfortunately, it's very hard to prepare very attractive, uh, how to say, <laughs> speech when it's talking just about some uh, acts and, and decrees. But okay, let's 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 do it. Let's do it slowly. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, so the first act from 1954, uh, the original language is, of course, um, it's uh, English, some parts are also in, in, in French language, and uh, it's about, as I mentioned before, so-called the mem uh, uh, Memorandum of Understanding signed in, in London. And you can see here, I put a short paragraph um, on the slide that it's written that in those communes in the area under Yugoslav administration, where the members of Italian ethnic groups are significant elements, it means at least one quarter of them, of the population, such inscriptions and names shall be in Italian, as well as in the language of administering authority. So you can see here that maybe it shows that maybe Italian language is more important than Slovenian at that time. But Italians, they live really on the coastal area, but the hinterland area was more or less settled by Slovene speaking population. But this is, let's say, the first, uh, the first uh, legal act. Then we can move um, to, into the year uh, 1980. You can see here, this is of course in, in Slovene language, and this is a decree about uh, writing geographical names in maps and plans uh, in uh, ethnically mixed areas in the Rep uh, Socialist Republic of Slovenia. You can see here six articles, and I will <clears throat> translate some, um, let's say, the most important facts from this, uh, this decree for better understanding <clears throat> nowadays situation. So it's written in the first article that the equality of, of languages um, uh, should be, how to say, secured or provide also through the bilingualism of the geographical names. Uh, so in Slovenian language and in Italian or Hungarian, depends on the, on the area. Um, so where or which micro um, area should be bilingual or is officially bilingual. In the London uh, <clears throat> of memorandum, it was written that one quarter is the, the limit, but here it's written that it depends on each municipality. So each municipality in 1980 um, decided uh, in which settlement of this municipality, uh, it's, it, which settlement is officially bilingual. And <clears throat> these facts were written in municipality status. And it was the same in case of um, Italian minority and in the case of Hungarian minority. Uh, in the third article, it's written that uh, names, geographical names should be written bilingual, but on the first place it's Slovene name, and in the second place it's Italian or Hungarian name. 
and then a fourth article different types of geographical names are mentioned so which name should be <clears throat> written bilingual it names of settlement hamlets streets field names names of landscapes of horonyms uh, water names names of peaks and names of uh, mountain ranges and the fifth uh, article is about the font so it's here is written that the size and type of of the the characters of, of the of the font should be the same in both languages so it's not allowed to to show through the through the size let's say for example through the size of the the font which um, language is let's say more or less important but it's important that slovene name is the first and uh, uh, minority name is on the second on the second type and so and the sixth uh, article is not not so important so it's from 1980 so at that time it's the first uh, how to say act in slovene language about the uh, the um, bilingual geographic official bilingual geographical names and then until 2008 so let's say 20 almost 30 years um there were nothing no no changes on this field but in 2008 a new act was published and in this act the 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 whole name official name of this act in english is act regulating the termination of territories and the naming and marking of settlements streets and buildings so this and also our commission is mentioned in this uh in this act and uh, i also put here um uh, so two slides from this uh, this act one is about the settlement names and the second is about the street names so <clears throat> in case of the settlement names it's written again that the name should be in slovene language and in the areas where the among the slovene language the official languages are also italian or hungarian uh, names should be also in italian or hungarian hungarian language in the article 17 uh, i would like to mention here that it's written that before municipality officially ask our authority or our commission to name or rename uh, bilingual settlements um, the minority organization uh, have to uh, agree with this decision so uh, minority organizations in this case are very important stakeholders when we are talking about naming or renaming settlements. Um, about the street names, it's again the 20th uh, article 20, it's the same like in, in case of a settlement names, so that names should be in Slovene language, but in the areas where the bilingualism is official should be in both languages i will show you later some some photos but in case of of streets the agreement from the minority represent representatives is not necessary so this is the differences between um legislation in case of settlements and in case of streets so in this case it's not necessary to receive a agreement from the minority representatives so this is from 2008 and then 2014 is very important uh, for our commission uh, because in this year a national land survey reference system act was published and you can see in the article <coughs> number 15 a paragraph number 10 here is written that the the way of or the regime of writing of geographical names on the nation on the national maps in ethnically mixed areas in the republic of slovenia is prescribed by government and immediately after this uh, act was published our government published also the decree so it's strongly connected with this act so the decree on the transcription of geographical names on again national maps in ethnically mixed areas in the republic of slovenia this <clears throat> decree has again six arti uh, six articles like uh, that one from 1980s um and um i would say that in this decree 
article number three is the most important and this article caused a lot of work for our commission in uh, recent in recent years why because in the first paragraph is written that the names of settlements municipalities and streets should be uh, on the on the national maps in uh, mixed uh, national mixed areas in the Republic of Slovenia should be in Slovene and Italian or Hungarian. And then the paragraph number two, uh, here is written that other geographical names, for example, names of uh, hamlets, important buildings, uh, rivers and lakes, some geomorphological sites, some other areas or traffic sites and so on, uh, should be written in Slovene li language, also in um, ethnically mixed areas. But just in case that these names are standardized in Italian or Hungarian language by our commission, can be written also on bilingual way. So, and of course, when representatives from both minorities in our parliament receive this decree, uh, they immediately contact our our um, commission. Maybe they heard for our commission first time at that time and they saw this this decree. And of course they said, okay, here is the decree. Now you are responsible to prepare the bilingual uh, geographical names for national national maps. And we said and we answered, okay, it's true, it's a new it's a new decree, but of course, we, uh, due to lack of finances and human resources in our commission, it's not possible from our side. But we will prepare as a commission some materials that you will check on field these names and you can ask also your um, national commission, so Hungarian and Italian, and then you will prepare these bilingual names and then we will standardize all these names. And they agreed at that time with, with this decision and um the the works on um with, we on uh, according to this this decree started at that time um and he, he, the, the last three articles are more or less um, the similar uh, like in in from 1980s uh, it means uh, it's written again that um both names should be written in the same script in the same font the same size and um, uh, between Slovenian and Italian or Hungarian name, the um, slash should be uh, uh, like a, it's like for a sep separation. Um, and yes, and we will uh, now, and this is more or less about everything about legislation or regulation in, in Slovenia. Uh, later on, we will I will show you some some results of of these uh, regulations of these uh, legislations, and um, you will see some some maps and some some other things. So, first of all, on uh, of all on your left side, you can see the ethnically mixed area settled by the Italians. Um, this map is uh, in scale one versus. 250,000. It's so called the Slovenian uh, national map with standardized standardized names. And it's one of the results of our commission. And you can see here that, for example, names of settlements are written bilingual, but not other names. For example, Adriatic Sea is just in Slovene, Copper Bay, uh, Piran Bay, this is just in Slovene language. But just uh, names of settlements are, are bilingual. On your right side, you can see the map, the official also map with standardized uh, names in scale one versus one million. This is um, this was part of the Angegen series about, I don't know exactly the name of the series, but it's like a, a official documents on the field of uh, standardization of geographical names. So we prepared a, a short uh, booklet and map uh, in scale one versus uh, one million. And when you, of course, the, the first um, symbol of bilingualism on the field, there are uh, road signs and you can see uh, here two examples from the Italian minority. Uh, in some cases, I don't know, maybe some of you are fluent in Italian. 
uh, you can see that the differences between both names, so this one is Slovene, this one is uh, uh, Italian, are really small, more or less it's adoption pronunciation, so Bertocchi, Bertocchi, a different uh, character, but more or less the same pronunciation. But for example, in case of Koper slash Capodistria, it's not the, the similar case. The Italian name Capodistria origins in, it's like a cape of the Istria Peninsula. So this is the etymological, how to say, it, it comes on this way. But Koper, Koper, <clears throat> origins in Latin uh, capris, and it means goat in, in, in Latin language. So it's not just an adaptation of the name or just uh, some small differences uh, etymological from the etymological point of view, it's more or less a different name. So it's maybe interesting for, for you as an, a specialist for, for names. And <clears throat> here you can see the situation uh, with, uh, where the, the Hungarian minority lives. It's the same. In this area, it's uh, scale one versus 250,000. Geographical names of the settlements, official settlements are, are bilingual. Um, and here is the um, scale one versus one million. And again, just the names of the settlements. You can see here some some st small streams, some lakes, and so on, just in just in Slovenian language. So so these maps are a little bit uh, old. And the, the same in 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 uh, same uh, road signs in in uh, where the min uh, Hungarian minority lives. So it's Trimlini. Um, I don't know. I I. Translations should be three mils, probably. I think the Hungarian is the uh, also the, the translation. So it's the, just the translation. And you have you can see here the Prosenia um, uh, se settlement also uh, bilingual. And now some more modern cases. You can see on your left uh, side uh, the name of the name Markovets. It's it, the new tunnel was was built in close to the coast to the Slovenian coast in in the area where um, uh, Italian is official language, and um, just few weeks after how to say the opening ceremony of this this tunnel, uh, the minority representatives uh, sent us an let's say mail. That this is bilingual, officially bilingual area, so it's not enough just Markovets, but it should be also Monte San Marco. It's an um, Italian name of this hill where this tunnel through through which this tunnel was was built. So it's not you can see here it's it's not um, the photo. It's not from the same side, but on at that time at the beginning from the both side was just Markovets and nowadays it's from the both side bilingual names and you can see slash slash between everything's like in it's written in the in the regulations and also uh, names of uh, streets this this um uh, they, uh, you can see that they are bilingual, so Zankarevo ulice means Zankar Street via you and Zankar. It's in Italian, also uh, Ulica Agrarne, Nefo Agrarne Reforme. Uh, These um, uh, uh, signs are quite old, but it's the same, it's the same nowadays. And now, at, for the, the end of my um, <clears throat> presentation, uh, the the last result of um, the of the decree from 2014, as I mentioned before. So um, in this decree is written that uh, all names can be bilingual, just in case that names are standardized by, by our commission, especially field names and, and other names. And you can see here the digital orthophoto on your left side. And uh, we put uh, uh, the shape file, or the, the layer with uh, from our resis or from our uh, database with the names. Um, and you can see, for example, here. Let's let's look some examples. Uh, so Piranski Zaliwit means Piran Bay. It's written just in, Slo in Slovenian. Uh, you have here. You can see Fazan Fazano. So it's Italian, but it's in bracket. And uh, for example, Lucia, Lucia, it's firstly wrong, and then in Slovene it's with capitals, in Italian it's with normal uh, script. And uh, for example, Tricage, 
here is a mistake in Slovene language and the name is just in Slovenian and so on and so on. So it now you can see it's a it's a chaotic situation on, on this on this field. But uh, on the right hand side you can see the new version. So after the process of standardization of all these names, so when we sent the documents to Italian minority, we decided uh, firstly to prepare in scale one versus 25,000. So our secretary Maria Bernot, she prepared all these documents and sent to the minority. Um, the minority members, they went on field, they asked people, they asked also um, um, uh, Andrea Cantile, the member of the Angegen, the Italian representative in Angegen. He's from the Instituto Geografico from Italy. Um, and also, as far as I know, they also, so the members of a minority, they um, uh, contacted also sa some universities and, and so on. And they they prepared, an, let's say, a new version of, of this of this. Um, this uh, this database and then we we put uh this data on on the on the map uh and you can see here for example now let's say everything is according to the new regulation to the new legislation the majority of names are bilingual we <clears throat> Uh, there are no mistakes anymore, also in Slovene language, so we checked also the Slovene versions of name. Uh, we checked also the location, so for example, you can see here the Canal Svete Gajernaja is Sankt um, uh, Jarne channel. Uh, it's, the position is not okay, so it should be here. Here is the channel, not, not here. This channel is another one, it's Canal Lera, for example. and. Um, so uh, Slovenian and Italian names are with the same script, with the same size and and so on. And also you can see here, um, here is for example, just, just in Slovene language, all these names are now bilingual. So, and this is the final result of this process of standardization in case of uh, Italian minority. Now they are preparing uh, the database in scale one versus 5,000. So more detailed, of course, there is much more names and much more work as well. And we are now waiting for their, their result. Um, the situation with Hungarian minority is not so good. Uh, our commission, I mean, uh, Maria, our secretary, she prepared the same documents also for Hungarian minority. Uh, they also came to uh, at our institute and we had a meeting. You can see this is the, the member of the parliament of the Hungarian minority. And uh, the situation is still, uh, as you can see here, so the majority of names in this area is, uh, they, these names are more or less, in, some of them are in Slovene language, some of them, for example, Telekvek, Pozus, Falo, these names are, are um, uh, Hungarian. And it's again the chaotic situation in comparison with the situation also in the case of Italian minority uh, in 2004. So, as I mentioned, we send the uh, documents. They prepared something and they asked something at the beginning, but last four years, let's say, there were no no response. What is interesting, it is that um, Hungarian. Commission for Standardization is is really um, active. So uh, we know I mean, me and Peter, so our colleagues, uh, Gabor, uh, Gersha, Gabor, Mikhilshi, and, and uh, some some other colleagues from the the commission. So the commission is really really active, but the members of minority are are not. It seems they are not so interested in this topic. But in case of Italy, Italian minority, uh, we know because we are now dealing with um, Slovenian names in, where Slovenian minority lives in Italy, that they have a lot of problems on the national level. For example, we have database, but in case of Italy, there is no database. So for some settlements, we know we don't know is this a separated settlements or it's not, or it's just a part of the settlement. So we are now dealing with these uh, open questions. And I heard I <coughs> visited uh, members of our minority approximately one one and a half month ago and they told me that 
Italian uh, uh, colleague Andrea Cantile asked our minority to prepare the uh, the database. So it's vice versa situation than in Slovenian case. So in our case, we prepare the database and ask the minority to to check and correct the the names. But in case of um, our minority in, in in Italy, it's it's vice versa. So now our members they are preparing now. I I don't think they are really. Um, how to say the the right person to to do it, but okay, this is the situation there. Um, in case just a word or two uh, with our minority in in Hungary, we are just at the end of one project when uh, we from our institute and my colleague from Institute for Slovene Language we prepared a database for our um, <clears throat> for Slovenian field names in Porabie, in area where Slovenian minority is located. And uh, we also prepared the standardized form of the name and the fully <clears throat> dialect, uh, uh, dialect form of the names. Uh, we visited the area, we spent a whole week there, we visited a lot of people and we prepared before the maps with uh, names from several sources and we checked all these names on field with these people and we recorded all, all these um, discussions. So we, uh, we are now in the final stage of preparing uh, map of bilingual names in, in Porabia region. Uh, so um, I see on my uh, clock that it's more or less approximately 50 minutes uh, <laughs> I, I spent. So I, I hope you heard or you find something interesting. Maybe it's in some something you can share also with your colleagues. At, and at the end, if there are some questions, uh, remarks or comments, uh, do not hesitate to, to ask or to comment. I think we have maybe some more minutes to discuss about uh, this topic. So th this is more or less from everything from my, my side. So man, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And please, Peter, floor is yours now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matas, very, very much for this uh, interesting lecture, which was well structured and, and very clear, I think. Um, before I open the floor for the discussion, I would like to ask you a question myself, perhaps. Um, you know that there is a very vivid discussion today about, in all of, in several countries of Europe, on uh, the question to which, to which extent dialect forms should be recognized or yes, um, accepted uh, for standardized names. How is the situation in Slovenia in this respect? And especially as regards minorities. The Italian minority, for instance, is locally speaking a Venetian dialect, huh, which was earlier classified as a language, as a standard language, or still is classified as a standard language. And um, are these Venetian forms standardized or are the Italian the, the forms uh, according to the to standard Italian standardized? This would be my question. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, this question is very, uh, how to say, uh, important, but also at the same time hard for me because from, in, let's say in, in our commission, we have one uh, colleague from uh, Institute for Slovene Language. Uh, she's fluent in Italian. So she, she, she knows more or less everything about this. But I think, so from my point of view, this should be a part of the national commission. So in case, I can explain you in case of Slovenian names in Hungary, field names. So I think it's, it should be done by, by our commission to prepare a suggestions and send this suggestion, the standardized forum to the Hungarian commission. So the Finnish, let's say final document. So it's, and also in case of, of Italian names in, in, in Slovenia, um, we asked Italian minority to check these versions, these names with the, some uh, universities in Italy. So we are not, uh, how to say educated enough and we are not specialists for the Italian language that we can judge is this okay according to the some regulation in, in Italian language so I'm I'm how to say I'm dealing with these questions in Slovenian language and also you probably know that we had a common project with with uh, um, 
some our institutes from the where Slovenian minority lives in, in Austria. So in Slovenian side, we try to solve the problem about the way of um, standardization or how to say the way how the dialect forum should be transformed in the official forum. It's very hard and a question we had a long discussion also in, in, in uh, Gorica uh, one month and a half ago. Also, uh, for example, in, in Rezia Valley, the Slovenian language there or the, the dialect there is very, very different than uh, official Slovenian language. So how strong is uh, is still acceptable f accepted for the local people and at the same time accepted for the our official language. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's case to case. So it's try to <laughs> it's very it's very hard. This is the mm -hmm. I would say the hardest work uh, mm -hmm. in our in, in, in this in this process. And also in case of Hungarian, so when we prepared with our minority, so when we prepared the final list of the names, we ask again some people in uh, members of our minority in Hungary to check again these versions and they also they uh, made some small some small corrections so they, it wasn't how to mm -hmm. say the final at the end we we find some 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 results yes yeah but it's i think from lang language to language is different, different yeah, so yeah. it varies from case to case yeah and case, from case to case yes, yes if the dialect name or the standard name version a language version is acceptable acceptable for the local population yeah. Yeah. You standardize it in dialect form, perhaps. Hmm? Yes, yes, yeah. it's it's up to the minority uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. representatives. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. Well, I open the floor for other questions, please. Who else wants to ask a question or has a comment, perhaps? So I will ask another question in the meantime, perhaps some, <clears throat> yes, uh, you, you said that on official topographical maps, uh, settlement names are always uh, bilingual in minority areas, but not names of natural features. Uh, and have you made, a, or do you know of any attempts to change this situation? So are there any attempts uh, to, um, make also names of natural features bilingual in the minority areas because it's uh, since the environment of a, of a minority is not confined to the settlements yeah, they are living in houses yes but they have their natural environment so they have rivers around them they have mountains around them they have the sea the lake around them and it would just be reasonable and and uh, and good as, and 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 consequent I think to have also these names bilingual. I know that also in the Austrian official maps, this is not the case <laughs> in mm -hmm. all the areas, but I think it would be a, a good, a good, uh, a good attempt. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can, you can see here, for example, that, um, for example, Dragonia River, uh, it's in just in one part, it's uh, in in bilingual area, but at the beginning of the stream it's uh, monolingual area. But on here, where the bilingual uh, or the Italian language is official, uh, where this name is located, so we put both names: Slovenian and and uh, Italian. Mm -hmm. And also, for example, for the uh, some for the sea and for the base, Piran Bay, Copper Bay, and and so on. All these, let's say, natural features are are bilingual in this area where the uh, Italian um, language is, is official. Of course, some, sometimes it's very hard. For example, Guricco, the uh, hill on the uh, north um, eastern part of the Slovenia, where just a small area is settled by minority. But <clears throat> I remember when we had a meeting, I showed you a picture. It was the first question. So, uh, mm -hmm. so this big area is just a small part is on the bilingual area. Uh, it's possible to to say also um, to also to write the Hungarian name. But in this case, I think that there the Hungarian name doesn't exist even. Mm -hmm. In in some uh, some uh, big uh, areas or mountain ranges or so on. Um, 
some names don't exist even so it's but it's not now the standardization is not to to try to find uh, a new name just that there will be two names so in case the name is old existed before okay we will put this name on the map but otherwise you can let's say uh, uh, use the our version so uh, also if we can compare the slovenian and the italian for example, the number of names. Um, I just checked the situation. So, in case of the area close to the to the seaside, uh, so we standardized 305 Slovenian names and 245 Italian names. So it's not one to one, but the uh, total number of Italian names is a little bit lower than than slovenian and of course the same is in in hungarian in hungarian side and also for example in this our project in in hungary we said okay if there is if the local people use the hungarian version of the name and the slovene version maybe uh, existed before but they do not use anymore so we will not force to put on the map so we try to find let's say the the living version of of names in case there are both versions we put both versions in case there is just Slovenian or uh, Hungarian, we put just uh, just one version. So. Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> Are there any other questions or comments? Richard, please. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, a, a very interesting talk. So thank you very much for that. I've just got one question which relates to the last comment you were making. Um, the, situ the situation that you've described uh, almost presupposes that the relations, the numerical relations between the two communities are going to stay constant. What happens if the demography changes? And for example, one of the minority populations, one of the minority settlements has a population of minority speakers, which drops below your threshold. What's the long-term consequence of that for your database, for your mapping, and any policy decisions that flow from it? And there is, in our case, as far as I know, there is no threshold. So it was decided in 1980s in the statute of the municipality, which part of the municipality, which settlements are bilingual, officially bilingual. It's also a question, and oh, let's say an open question for me. So how long we will still um, write, let's say, uh, bilingual names on maps? Uh, because as, as you can see, so the, when the number of the minority is really small, probably in let's say hundred years or I don't know how how long in the future, uh, I don't know how many people will still use the let's say Hungarian or Italian or even Slovenian language in in Hungary. I would say that um, bilingual names are the first sign when you came to the multilingual area and it will be probably the last evidence uh, on maps and on road signs uh, that minority was uh, there uh, uh, in, the, in through the history unfortunately but this is this is our this is our life and this is probably the minority life of course the if, if the uh, number i'm i'm not a specialist for minorities and what's the how to say the threshold that minority can survive let's say but i think in our case when there are a few thousand it's probably i would say not enough to to survive on the long on the long distance way thank you very much thanks Yes, we have another question. Kai, please, please, please ask your question. But switch the microphone. You, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute. You have to un unmute yourself, please. No, <laughs> no voice. Well, so are there any what other about questions? now? Can you yes. hear me now? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we hear you. Hear yes. Okay. We don't hear you now. We don't. Yes, please unmute yourself. Okay. Yes. Uh, I try to get it. it. Let's see if it keeps muted. So. 
thank you again. Do you hear me now? Yes, yes I hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. And I have a little bit similar question than Richard asked about the settlements, because it was for me very interesting to hear about that you have very small minorities, but they still have these rights. And uh, I was... Uh, First, wondering if it's uh, it probably is a question of assimilation when you showed the 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 population in the nineteen forty five and then in the two thousand about the two thousand and the settlements ha had been or minorities have been really increased very smaller so uh, I assume it's about assimilation and not for example of movement to Italy and Hungary. Do you know something about that? But however, so um, I was actually also wondering about this, um, of these minority names, which seem to be very strong in your areas, that uh, is there any opposition against these minority names when you put up, for example, them on the signs or on the maps? Or does it always go smoothly to get these minority names in official use? I'm, of, of course, interested because we have quite a strong opposition against, especially Sami names in, 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 in Norway and sometimes also in Sweden. So that's what I'm <laughs> interested to hear. That is it a very, like, neutral process or smooth process to get these names in use. Thank you, yeah. Kaiser, for the question. Please, Matthias. Yeah, th thank you very much for these two questions. So I would like to answer first on the first question. Um, in case of Hungarian minority, I would say it's assimilation. It's like a natural process. But in case of Italy, it's not the same because um, in the Yugoslav period, Im immediately after the Second World War, um, a lot of Italians um, mo moved to the Italy, but it was more, more or less uh, due to political reasons. Um, so it's not, a, uh, it's not a, the normal process of assimilation. So there are two different um, mm. uh, situations. In case of Italians, it was some of them wanted to, to move to the Italy. The majority of them, it was how to say they were forced. So it was due to communist regime at that time. It was very, very strong um, and uh, hard for the Italian minority uh, members. Uh, about the second question and opposition uh, in case of um, bilingualism, it's not not uh, really uh, an opposition, especially uh, with with these official official names. But well, quite interesting situation is um, is uh, nowadays because in one municipality they decided to put uh, a science. With the uh, on on the with the very old street names from the uh, period when the uh, Italian fascism was uh, covered this area, and mm -hmm. this uh, this caused some opposition. So we received some question. Okay, what's going on? This is old uh, fa fascist names. Uh, it can uh, remind us to the very uh, hard time for Slovenian um, people. Of course, during the se uh, between the First World War and the Second World War, uh, uh, a big part of the nowadays um, Western part of the Slovenia was under the Italian control. And the fascists at that time caused a lot of problems. They changed the names of the settlements. They changed the names, the surnames, and so on and so on. And I would say that this, to put the old, uh, the, the street names, this this caused the opposition. But not when we are talking about the mo let's say modern official bilingual names. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Matej. Uh, are there other questions or comments? 
Well, I would have another one, perhaps. Um, you mentioned that bilingual settlements, uh, settlement names need uh, the, the improvement of minority organizations, the local uh, minority organization. But street names do not need this improvement. Is this because street names are not as important as settlement names? Or why is, what, what is the reason for this difference? I, I don't know exactly what is the reason we were not uh, involved in the preparing of this legislation. We are just following now the, the regulation and that's more or less uh, everything. I, I'm not, I don't know why, what's, yeah. what's the main reason that and maybe mm. the name of the settlements is how to say, let's say more important. So it's maybe easier to rename the street uh, name or something like that or the road name. But let's say in case of the uh, settlement name, it's uh, more complicated, you know, because then you have to, even in case of the street names, you need a new ID uh, card and a lot of documents you, uh, should be um, uh, reformed. So uh, I would say as yes, that maybe this is, this is the reason. There are some open questions now with two settlements in the case of Italian minorities, it's Lucia. Now, now you can see also here it's Lucia and Lucia and they, the Italian suggested to rename into Santa Lucia. But I'm not sure that in Slovene version will be also Sveta Lucia or we will just Lucia. So it's, mm -hmm. And uh, we have also another open question uh, with Jagodjens Saleto. So, but it's mm -hmm. quite a long process. So we mm -hmm. will see what, we, what will happen. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes. Are there any other questions or comments? The last opportunity now. <laughs> well, if this is not the case, then thank you very much again, Matthias, for this wonderful presentation and also for the responses. I think this enlarged the topic substantially. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you yes, very much. Yes. And um, as this is our last um, lecture this year, I would like to wish you a nice and uh, happy festive season and um, would um, be very happy to see you again next year for a next lecture. And uh, perhaps, Katalin, would you like to say some closing words? Oh, just a few words, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matthias, for this excellent and, and really informative uh, lecture. And uh, yeah, see you in 2024. With similar yes, excellent lectures, hopefully. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, you Katalin, and thank you all the participants. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Goodbye. <clears throat> Bye. Bye. Ah, Lasse. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi. Sorry, I was a bit late. Finally, you are here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to see. It's good to see you.